What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we're back with another AEW and Rival Collection 2-in-1 review on the AEW and Rival Collection Series 9 Ricky Starks and Thunder Rosa figures. Very excited to get into this review. I think these two are two of the best in the set. This whole set has kind of shocked me, man. If you guys missed out on the last two review days, we did Brian and Christian Cage. We did Powerhouse Hobbs and Eddie Kingston. And today, we have Ricky Starks and Thunder Rosa. Should be very fun as we dive in. All the figures in this wave so far have been really, really interesting and have done a fantastic job and I cannot wait to wrap up our set today and then we of course are going to rank the set very soon breaking down the full wave and give you guys all the different information about the set but AEW Unrivaled 9 is very nice it has six first time in the line characters and today we have Ricky Starks and Thunder Rosa first time in the line like I said and they look pretty great if you guys want to grab these figures go over to ringside collectibles use promo code MD Toys to save yourselves 10% lots of great stuff over there for pre-order lots of things on back order of course but you can put in your orders go ahead and lock those things in because you never know with this Unrivaled Collection. Things could be gone in an instant. But here's Ricky Starks. Here's Thunder Rosa. You guys, of course, have their names in gold foil across the front. You have both images of the talent on the front there. Standard Unrivaled packaging that we've grown used to. But if you guys wanted to know, Ricky Starks is 75. Thunder Rosa is number 77. And so, spinning it around, you have your bookcase-style packaging right there with both images of the talent. On the back, you have their signatures as well as talent photos in the ring there. You have all your first-time-on-the-line figures right there. The rest of the figures in the wave which we have already reviewed and then of course we have the AEW logo over there and that is our AEW Unrivaled 9 packaging man keeping it across the board who knows if it'll change I honestly don't think they will change it I don't I kind of don't want them to change it you know you want it to be uniform across the board but I don't know we'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it but anyways man let's crack these guys out of the packaging and find out what they are all about so here's Ricky Starks and Thunder Rosa out of their packaging. Liking what I'm seeing so far from these two. They look aesthetically really, really good. Now, how well do they move? How well are their accessories? How good are they going to be in your collection? We are going to find that out soon enough. But my first thoughts of them out of their packaging, I, I like them a lot. I do like them a lot. I think they look really, really nice spinning around here. I, I think aesthetically, again, they look nice. I feel like Ricky looks a bit tall. We'll get into the comparisons. Maybe he's not tall. But I do like aesthetically how these figures look. And that's, I mean, that's how the battle right there but what we're gonna do is take a closer look at thunder rose's accessories and thunder rosa and then we're gonna run it back and recover our team taz and cover the rest of that team taz there with ricky starks at least our our main three of team taz we are still missing hook and taz but we do have ricky starks and we're gonna see what he looks like so let's dive into the review all right guys so getting into thunder rose's accessories starting out first we do have her rubber overthrow right here which is actually not bad i wasn't really looking forward to this accessory and my camera's wanting to be a bitch but you guys can see here it's just this nice little rubber overthrow that goes over her shoulders you guys kind of already saw what it looks like on the figure and i like it it's got the nice tendrils coming off or the the nice little tassels coming off there it's got the silver and black colorway on the back it does say thunder rosa nice little cursive font coming down right here all looks clean all looks good you know i'd prefer cloth but you know for a piece like this it's not the biggest deal you know you can just throw it over the shoulders and then the hair keeps it down it's not terrible and then she comes with three pairs of interchangeable hands she does come with her mic holding hands right here which look pretty good you know no finger nail paint or no no paint right there on the hands or anything but nice little sculpt right there they look to be a little bit of a different sculpt than what we've seen in the past but there's her mic holding hands she also comes with two fisted hands now these look to be the same fisted hands we've seen in the past but you do have the nice fist sculpt hands and then we have the newly sculpted hands i'm pretty sure these are newly sculpted on her right hand she has nail polish on her two middle fingers right there in white and now looking at the back of the packaging she had black nail polish and white i don't know why some fingers are painted and some are not but these are a nice sculpt. You know, it's your devil horns, your I love you sign. Universally known, you know, there, there's multiple names for these hands, but they look good. It's a good sculpt and they fit the figure well. Get your thwipping hands for Spider-Man. All right, so getting into Thunder Rose's head sculpt, I like this a lot, actually. I think this is a really good head sculpt. One, usually I'm not one for the, you know, the grimacing head sculpts, but I think the likeness is pretty fantastic and the face paint looks really good. You have that, like, Days of the Dead, Sugar Skull-esque face paint going on half the time, and that looks really sweet. Covers up half her face i think it looks really really good the hair color looks good i like this a lot i think this makes it a really good figure this figure feels really good in the hand as well women's figures continuing to get better and better but i really do like this head sculpt a lot i think it does capture thunder rosa i think they did a really good job right here on the neck you guys can see you got a little tattoo right there pretty sure that's a tattoo right there on her shoulder slash neck you do have her black top here with the silver and the sugar skull design going down right there really clean deco there i like the bottoms there with the black and silver you do have the cheeks out you got thunder rosa 
Rose on the back in gold. You do have her nice leg tattoo right there, which looks good. Looks accurate to me all the times I've seen it. Double jointed arms looking pretty good. Belly button, upper thigh cut. You do get some nice like sculpted legs right here where it's like the wraps on the back of the knee pads. These are open knee pads and then you have the black sculpt underneath, which actually looks pretty good. It's a bit thick, but at the same time, I think it works. You do have your Rose right here on the knee pad and then going down into the kick pads, the black and gold. You got her insignia. You got some like lightning bolt designs going down. I like how they have the gold details on the shoes. I think that looks really good there. They always make the women's figures have tiny feet, which I guess is pretty accurate, but I'm liking this figure a lot, man. Just a really good figure, man. Feels really good in the hand. I think every figure in Unrivaled Series 9 has this, but her head can't look down. I can look down a decent amount. Can't really look up because of the hairpiece, of course. Shoulders can go up that far, which is above 90. You do get full rotation here. Biceps swivel. Double jointed arms. I think this figure could, uh, she could beat the hell out of a lot of your women's figures, you know? She's not quite Ronda Rousey level of amazingness as far as women's figures. She's got a decent little ab crunch right there. She is coming separate right there. You guys know how the women's figures like to do. But she has a nice split. You do have the upper thigh cut. You get the double jointed knee. You do get kick pad rotation. The ankles do move down and up. And the ankle pivot is a little bit stiff, but it's not bad. And I, I just like this figure a lot, man. It, it's probably one of my favorite women's figures they've made today. I don't know if it's the best one they've ever made, but it's definitely up there. It feels really good. And I think you guys are going to appreciate this one a lot. And that's the Rosa figure comparisons, guys. Here is every AEW women's figure that wrestles in the ring outside of Brandy Rhodes, of course. You know, I wasn't trying to include her at this moment. But this is all the different women's talent in the ring that we have gotten so far. Pretty crazy and cool to see the roster slowly growing. I'm sure we have plenty more to come. But it is cool to see all these up next to each other. You know, the women's collection slowly but surely growing day after day, series by series. And it is cool to see them all up next to each other. You could make a pretty cool little AEW women's action figure display. And we're not done, you know. We're not done. We got more to get. But this is a pretty cool sight to see, you know, all of them up next to each other, starting out with the earlier series and then, you know, working our way up slowly but surely. But yeah, I wanted to see what all the women's look like up next to each other. And then for Ricky Stark's accessories, you only get three pairs of interchangeable hands. You could include his necklace if you wanted to as an accessory. We'll look at that in just a moment. But you do get two of, like, the Kenny Omega entrance hands. This is, like, the same exact sculpt that Kenny Omega comes with, except the right hand has the thumb folded at the thumb. Are you a dumb idiot moron? That is clearly his pinky. It looks a bit odd, to be honest with you, but it looks all right. It's not bad. And then on this one, it is just the entrance Kenny Omega hand, I'm pretty sure. You know, it's just the opposite side of the shooter hand that comes with Kenny Omega. That's exactly what this is right here. So it's not bad. You get two pairs or a pair of those, but again, the, the pinky is folded in. You also get a pair of fists, which is cool to see. I feel like we haven't seen fists with a men's figure in a little bit there, so it's cool to see some fisted hands, you know? I know we've seen it in this wave. I just meant before this wave, it had been a minute since we saw some fisted hands. And then we have the classic mic holding slash grabby slash whatever the hell hands you want to call these. This is, you know, your, your mic holding slash grabby hands. So getting into Ricky Starks, man, starting out at the head sculpt, I think this is a very, very good head sculpt, man. I think you're definitely seeing the Ricky Starks likeness. Comes across great. I think the likeness is really good. It captures all his different focal points that make him Ricky Starks. The hair looks good. The sculpt in general is just good. You get plenty of head rotation right here. We're going to get into the articulation, but he does have a silver necklace right here. Pretty sure this is just a Darby Allen necklace. Maybe it has a little bit more width to it, but it looks to be the exact same. Head sculpt again does look good. Going down into the torso, I want to say this is the, it's not the Kenny Omega torso. It almost looks kind of like the Cody Rhodes torso, I think, if I'm not mistaken, but it looks good. I think all this works out for me. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't have any issues with that. He's a lean guy. You got the black elbow pad over here. Like the wrist tape a lot. It matches his trunk. So this bright blue trunks and wrist tape with the black and the different yellowy green color going on with the stuff hanging off. I think it's a chain. Looks really nice. You got Starks on the back. Really like that color. It's a really bright color and it even is brighter in person. Like it really pops off really nice. You got the RS there in the middle. Nice looking legs going down. You do have your black paint behind the knee pads, which is cool. These knee pads look nice as well. This blue color is just really good, man. They're not open knee pads, but they do fit really nicely on the figure. I think that all looks good. And then you go down into his boots. His boots are really cool. You have the white tips and then you have the whiteness going down the back. And these boots are a new mold as well. I think this is brand new sculpted boots. I'm telling you, man, like every AEW figure we get, it's like everything is one of one sculpted. You're not seeing a lot of reuse parts. It seems like they are genuinely like creating new sculpts for every figure. Now, I don't know how sustainable that is, but it is cool to see. And I think that's awesome. It makes every figure very unique to itself. And you're not just getting a bunch of repaints and stuff like that. I know you get that with the chases. You get that in the two packs and stuff like that. But at least in these Unrivaled series, we are seeing a lot of different molds coming in. Now, here's the figure all on its own here. We're getting into the articulation 
translation, we do have a very good range of motion here. He can look like almost all the way up and he can look all the way down. You do get some head pivoting and stuff like that. Since he is shirtless and stuff like that, you do get a pretty good ab crunch in there. He can bend forward pretty well and back. Shoulders go above 90. Hands a little bit loose there. Not bad though. You do get the bicep swivel and the double jointed arm. He can't turn his waist. Of course, you guys know how the technology is nowadays, but you can pretty much turn around. It's not like a huge deal. In kick forward, nice. He is on the splits. He's there. You get the thigh cut. You get the double jointed knee here and you get boot rotation and you get ankle pivot and it goes up and down there. Figure feels really good in the hand again, man. He actually feels a lot taller than I thought he would. Like he's not a short figure. He kind of feels kind of tall. Let's get into some comparisons right now. So here's your team task figure comparisons. You do have Brian Cage and Powerhouse Hobbs. All three of these guys coming in the same series. So that is cool that we have our team Taz. Of course, we're missing Taz and Hook to, to be featured here, but all three of them look good together. I will say it is kind of odd because they're all three wearing different gear, which is, it is what it is. It's not the biggest deal ever. However, Brian Cage is supposed to be six foot and Hobbs is supposed to be six one and Ricky Starks is actually six foot. So if you compare them here, that looks pretty accurate to me right there. And then, you know, when they're supposed to be the same height here and I mean, they look to be pretty scale to me. So there, there's that, but they look good up next to each other. I think if you had some shirts or, you know, you put them up on display together, you get that Taz figure in here. We get that hook figure that's coming not too far in the future. It's actually, it's, it is, a, it's a little ways away there, but you know, it is still cool to see these figures up next to each other. And it's so cool to see these guys all three in the same series because it really changes up the line. You know, we're not having any Jerichos, no Omegas, no Young Bucks. It is all these new first time in the line guys coming into this wave. And that looks really good here up next to each other. And then for your five-star banger comparison, we do have Kenny Omega up next to Ricky Starks here and they look good together as well. They scale well and everything like that. You guys can see it's a difference in torso. It's not the same torso. This is is, I think, the Cody Rhodes torso, like I mentioned before. But, you know, it is what it is. There's Ricky Starks and uh, all his glory. But I think that pretty much wraps up our Ricky Starks and Thunder Rosa review. We have finally wrapped up AEW and Rivals Series 9. Now, I do believe we're going to do a My Damn Thoughts episode on this whole series. We're going to break it all down. I'm going to give you guys my full coverage of the set and what I think is the total ups and the total downs of the whole set. Of course, we're going to do all of those things. But I was impressed with both of these figures a lot. I like how I have Thunder Rosa in her Spider-Man thwipping pose right here but it, it's pretty impressive. I think the full wave blew me away with expectations. I, I wasn't looking forward to this set that much, and then uh, of course we got it in hand and it blew me away. Like I, I was looking forward to the set. It just wasn't like one of those sets where I just could not wait to get it in my hands, but after having it in my hands I am very happy with it. I think it's really nice. I think the figures are great, and I think if you guys would like to grab these, go over to Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%, but I, I like this wave. I, I'm ready for this wave to hit retail so I can go grab myself some extras and you know get my mock set, you know, play around with all of those different things, and Unmatched Series 4 has got to be coming soon, right? With CM Punk and that whole wave together, I think that is going to be a great wave, of course, but Ricky Starks and Thunder Rosa are really nice, and I think they proved it here today, man. I, I, I think that there wasn't really a bad figure in this wave. I think that everybody kind of came together, and we'll find all those things out in the ranking, of course, but I think that both of these are worth the pickup. I think they're both first time in the lines. I think they're really good iterations of both of them. I don't think you're going to be wasting money. These are great additions to your collection. It expands upon the women's and men's collections of AEW figures, and that's all you can really ask for, man. They, they look fantastic, and they pose well, and they, they look great, so there is that, but I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts on this set down in the comment section below. What do you think of Starks and Rosa? I'd love to know that as well down below. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. Leave me your thoughts on these figures down below. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.